it's Julie. I'm so glad you found this video and this channel where we talk about the nature of the toddler and all sorts of things to help the child develop into the unique and wonderful person they're meant to be. Speaking of unique and wonderful people, <laughs> toddler sharing. So when we talk about toddler sharing, I want to invite you to evaluate your concept of what toddler sharing will be. I don't know what that is for you. There are a few approaches to toddler sharing. Let's talk about those before I get started on how we teach toddlers to share in the Montessori classroom and how you can teach them to share at home. Okay, first off, some adults have a different standard for toddler sharing than they have for other humans. An adult expectation of toddler sharing may look like this. Raul is playing with the hammer. Connie comes over, likes the hammer, takes the hammer. Raul says no and holds on tight, starts screaming. Because remember, he was playing with the hammer. Connie, did I say Connie? Connie is crying, saying, I want the hammer, I want the hammer. Parents come in, do something like that. Oh, no, oh, Connie's crying. She wants the hammer. Rail's crying because he's naughty and doesn't want to share the hammer. Pound the hammer five times and then give it to Connie because she really wants it. See how sad she is. She wants so what does that teach the child? It teaches Raul that he can use something until someone more powerful comes along and says, no, you can't use it anymore and takes it and gives it to Connie because Connie's really upset and wants it really badly. That's what that teach <laughs> that's what that teaches Raul. And hmm, it does happen in the world, doesn't it? But is it the world we want to create? Let's take an adult example that might replicate that. So I'm heating up my coffee in the microwave that I left out cold for the hundredth time. And it's got 40 seconds left. And my husband comes and says, I want to use the microwave. And I say, okay, um, I'll be done in 40 seconds. No, I want it now. My coffee's cold now. But there's 30 seconds left, then you have it. No, I want it now. Give, give me a turn because I really want the microwave. And then someone came in and said, give him the microwave. And I'm like, but I've got, you know, there's only 20 seconds left and I want to heat my coffee. Well, that's too bad. You can see he's really upset. He wants, wants the coffee, right? That wouldn't be a thing. Would it? I hope not. That one. The person would wait till you're done with the microwave. That's what we expect in polite society. So why would we expect poor little Raul using his hammer to give to Connie just because Connie wants the hammer? That is not sharing. Why would we expect a child to share in that fashion when that's not the way we share? Another thing that happens when we invite our children's friends over is he comes over and is checking out the bedroom checking out the toys and oh he finds a book that your child's aunt gave her it's her very favorite book you have to read it five times every night you don't have to you read it five times every night and she loves this book and it's special and her favorite aunt gave it to her and you know jeremy shows up and says i want to look at that book and your daughter says no it's my book and you say well that's not very nice susie look jeremy what wants to look at your book. And it'd be nice just to give it to him and let him look. And he's not gonna hurt it, he's gonna be safe. Jeremy, you're gonna be safe with the book. And Susie's like, man, I don't wanna give him the book. She says, no, it's my book. And you know, she gets teary-eyed and then the the mom's embarrassed because you know, Susie doesn't wanna share with Jeremy and Jeremy's mom's watching her dad. She shame Susie to the point of handing the book over to Jeremy and Susie wasn't being selfish. That was just her very special favorite book. So imagine you invite a, a friend over, glass of wine, whatever, and she says, oh, I like your earrings. And go, oh, thanks. My spouse got them for me for 10 year anniversary. Oh, those are really pretty. I like them. Oh, thank you. I want to wear them. Um, but they're my special earrings. And I want them. I want to wear them for a while. Give them to me. And then your spouse comes in and goes, oh, yeah, let her wear them. What's the harm? Well, they're kind of my special earrings and I want to be wearing them now. No, 
No, that well, that's really mean and selfish of you. I mean, that's not a thing that happens with adults, is it? Okay, probably your friend's not going to ask you to wear your earrings. But toddlers are going to ask. That doesn't mean your child has to say yes, right? They can have special things. Now, a way to prevent this, to kind of know what their favorite special things are and put them up, and then maybe they will. Actually, often they will say, you know, I want to show Jeremy my special book. But then you have to set boundaries. Okay, everything we have out, when your friend comes over, we're going to take turns with, right? That's, that's how we share, by taking turns, right? If the book is sitting on the table and you're not looking at it, Jeremy can have a turn at the book and he can look at that book until he's done. You shouldn't have a completely different standard just because someone is short and young. They should be given the same respect with sharing and they should be required to wait for their turn and um, they can have their turn when the other child is done. So if you haven't figured it out by now, the way Montessori guides teach children to share is to teach them what sharing really is in their culture. And so the older people, they share by taking turns. They just, and they ask, and if someone says no, then they respect that. Otherwise, a crime's being committed, right? So in a Montessori classroom, we have you know, the items set up on shelf. They know it's available to use if it's on the shelf. Does that mean they're not interested in what other children are doing? No, of course not. Remember, they're drawn to movement. They see it, an activity is more attractive oftentimes when someone's using it, but once it's consistently enforced for the children that you can choose a work when it's on the shelf, we share by taking turns. You know you can have a turn when the work is not being used by someone else. That teaches the child who wants something, has an impulse for a work, when they can actually have the work. And it teaches the children when they're using it that they can relax into the work, they can enjoy the work without fear that some other power is going to come over and say, oh, give that to him because he's throwing a fit and obviously he wants it more than you or he wouldn't be throwing a fit. That's not the world we want. Outside things can look a little different. We do put things away, but it's a little more loose and relaxed. You know, one person might be using um, a shovel for a big, you know, digging project. Everyone's kind of digging, filling up a planter. But if someone comes over and grabs a shovel, we don't say, oh, he really wants that shovel. Why don't you let him have a turn? You know, then they're person shoveling. It's their work. It's still their work. <laughs> or take example of a riding toy. Someone's riding along, having a good time. Another child comes over, tries to take them off, okay? And, and then collapses to the ground. Oh, but I want it. We don't say, we do not say, oh, why don't you take the riding toy around the yard one more time and then let Taylor have it. Cause see, oh, Taylor's sad. Don't you care? Taylor's sad. And so what? We say is, Emma's writing that now. Emma, when you're done, could you let Theo know that you're done writing? And Emma will go, yes. And they go, okay, she'll let you know when she's done. What often happens is that Emma doesn't write it for that much longer because she's generous, because toddlers are generous. And she lets Theo have it. So this approach to teaching children to share has great benefits. One is it teaches the way adults actually share and eventually they're going to be adults and we want them to act like adults. We don't, we don't want them to throw fits and whine until they get what they want, right? We, we want them to wait their turn, not um, telling someone else how long they get to use something for and violating their rights. So you will have challenges when you're in groups of other parents and other children, you know, outside your household because they might have one of these other perceptions of sharing and that is that we take turns back and forth arbitrarily on the whims of what the adults think is nice or polite. Which you can do to advocate for the typical way that adults share is by saying, oh, we're teaching him to share by taking turns and that someone can use a toy for as long as they want and then 
when they're done, then someone else can use it. And then we find that that is teaching him patience and teaching him to respect other people's activity and other people's positions. And we're finding it works really well. And sharing this way in your own home among siblings will do a lot to diminish sibling rivalry if if the children get to use it until they're done and if they get to have items that they don't have to share with their siblings that can really cut back on the bickering okay thanks for watching this 